Hello, friends, colleagues, industry leaders, all. In my opinion, being a blaster or a blasting engineer is one of the most exciting careers in the world. We've all felt that feeling of excitement just before the blast. Excitement that's sometimes mixed with some anxiety, too. Thoughts of safety, fly rock, vibrations, fumes, and blast fragmentation performance race through one's mind before the blast. As blasting engineers, we know that the downstream cost of an unsafe or inferior blast can be astronomical for the mine. It's our responsibility to ensure that each and every blast goes well. If it doesn't go well, we're called to account to answer one important question. Why? Hello, Samoanya. Hello, everyone. My name is Bill Bauer from MREL in Canada. I've been a professional mining engineer for 40 years, a member of the International Society of Explosives Engineers for 35 years, and a member of the International Association of Bomb Technicians and Investigators. I extend my sincere gratitude to the IBES for inviting me to speak with you today. Please accept my humble apologies for not being there with you in person. My prior travel commitments would not allow it. Instead, I've prepared this video presentation and I hope you will find it worthy of your time. I believe it will be made available for download after the conference. Today I have 15 minutes with you to make the case for explosives VOD recording. I'll show some illustrated examples of explosives detonating well, and perhaps more importantly, some examples of when they don't detonate as designed. The presentation is outlined as follows. Um, I'll touch briefly on MREL's blasting instrumentation business. Uh, we'll talk about explosives VOD and what it is. What can VOD testing tell us? Some examples of VOD testing in one blast hole, also in multiple blast holes. Uh, I'll follow up with summary and conclusions and provide you with some contact information too. MRL's blasting instrumentation uh, business uh, is as follows. We are the world's leading manufacturer of a continuous explosives VOD recorders. We're the world's leading supplier of high-speed digital video cameras for blasters. We're a large investor in R&D of innovative blasting instrumentation. Our international customer base includes the who's who of explosives manufacturers, explosives consumers such as mines and quarries, government laboratories, universities, and blasting consultants. Here's our HQ location in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Uh, here's some location of uh, calibration facilities throughout the world to calibrate our instruments. Uh, here's where we're represented with qualified, fully authorized dealers. I'd like to extend thanks to MREL's authorized blasting instrumentation dealer in Indonesia, Pete Abdiasa Dharma Inovasi, and we're very pleased to be working with them here. Uh, our global uh, customer base uh, is shown in this slide, and you can see it's pretty well global. Um, I'd also like to thank in Indonesia uh, our current customers. We really appreciate uh, the business, and we uh, do understand you're putting our instrumentation to excellent use in um, testing the performance of explosives on your uh, blasts or on your customers' blasts. Thank you. VOD is the speed at which the shock wave front travels through a detonating explosive. The VOD gives an indication of detonation pressure. If the VOD is tested and found to be out of specification, 
then the blasting results such as fragmentation and throw will usually suffer and it will cost the mine money. Your blast design might be perfect. Your explosives, however, may be causing bad blasts. And it's not necessarily the explosives as it's come off the truck. It could be environmental effects such as water in the hole, uh, pressures from uh, holes detonating on earlier delays, a variety of um, factors can affect the performance of explosives in the hole. So with MREL's recorders, you can test and characterize new explosive formulations, testing samples of explosives. And you can also be very proactive and test uh, samples taken off the truck before the truck's allowed to uh, load uh, onto the shot. Uh, finally, you can also uh, test the, the quality of manufactured detonators uh, to measure the timing accuracy of those detonators, all within 0.5 microsecond accuracy. That's half a microsecond accuracy. So what can VOD uh, testing in blast holes tell us? Well, we can look at the effects of wet holes. We can look at the effects of hydrostatic pressure. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the effects of dynamic shock and vibrations from holes detonating on earlier delays. Uh, we can evaluate uh, booster sizes. Do we need a bigger booster? Uh, maybe we, uh, we can go to a smaller booster. Um, we can investigate such things as decking material type and decking material length when we have uh, decks of explosives. We can also investigate such things uh, as sleep time. How long are we leaving our explosives in the hole uh, before we're calling upon them to detonate? Uh, when we're testing um, uh, multiple blast holes uh, in a blast, we can actually determine the actual delay times between holes to within half a microsecond accuracy. Uh, we can also, to that same accuracy, uh, determine the actual delay times of decked explosives. That's all fine and well. Um, it's probably easier to uh, lead with some examples here. Let's look at uh, augered explosives, uh, such as AMFO, for example. Um, this is one dry hole uh, with one bo booster. You can see the blast hole here, the rock around it, the drill cuttings at the top of the hole, um, into the hole uh, with a VOD recorder, you need to load uh, the sensor cable, which uh, MREL calls VOD probe cable. And it's calibrated at the factory resistance. It's got a known resistance per unit length cable. You just tie it off to a rock and lower it to the bottom of the hole. Then you load your hole as per usual. There's the, the detonator and booster. There's the initiation line. And it doesn't matter what type of initiation you're using. You can still test the VOD of the explosives. Um, there's the auger explosives in place and the stemming. Um, the VOD probe cable is uh, uh, connected then to RG58 coaxial cable and um, connected to the VOD recorder. In this case, it's a microtrap VOD recorder, which is located at a safe distance from the blast so it won't get hit by any potential fly rock. So um, you set the VOD recorder to start recording and we fire the blast per usual. Um, and when the hole goes off, the booster goes off, uh, detonator and booster in this case, um, the booster position is known. We can see a graph there of distance versus time, and this is automatically recorded by the microtrap. Um, so when the booster goes off, it cuts off uh, a length of cable, which corresponds to the location of the booster in the hole. Then the booster continues to fire the bulk explosives above it, and we record that on the microtrap as a change in distance with time, and we can easily zoom in and report the velocity of detonation for any portion of that um, explosive. Here's a, um, um, a hole with a backup booster uh, in it. 
Again, the same thing. This will be common throughout most of the slides here. Um, the detonator and booster location, the initiation line, the probe cable is already in the hole. And in this case, we're installing a backup uh, detonator and booster. A full column of explosive. Again, attaching the micro trap, shooting the shot. Uh, when the bottom booster goes off, it's timed in this case for the bottom booster to go off first. Uh, we can determine the booster position of the bottom booster in the hole the velocity of the explosives uh, all the way through the column. And in this case, the uh, bulk explosive shoots through the, the detonator, or the uh, backup booster. Um, and here's an, expl uh, an example with uh, two explosive decks. You might deck the, uh, the blast hole to reduce vibration, for instance, or if you have a plane of weakness in in your strata at the at the mine that you don't want to shoot with explosives. So uh, there's the hole. It's um, loaded with augered explosives and the stemmings in. You can see the decking material, the two boosters, and the probe cable extending the full length of the hole. When the shot's fired, the bottom booster shoots first, and we can get the position of the booster again, the velocity of explosives above that booster, and then we have a delay time. Um, here when we reach the the decking material and then the back uh, sorry not the backup booster the the top deck is time to fire later and we can get the delay time between the bottom booster and the top booster the booster position of the top booster and also the velocity of detonation of the explosives above that top booster okay so that's all fine uh, what happens when holes go wrong what does that look like well here's an a, a wet hole and unfortunately, this uh, operator has decided to auger in AMFO from the top of a, um, a wet hole and dropped it into the, dropped it into the water. And uh, we'll see what happens in this case. The booster fires, we get the booster position, and the bulk explosive fails. That's what a failure graph looks like. Here's... Um, one of a backup booster assisting in a wet hole. So again, um, we have the same setup, augered in on top of explosive, uh, say an AMFO, and um, the bottom booster is called to fire, and it fires, but the bulk explosive fails, and then the backup booster is relied upon to shoot um, whatever it can in the top of the column. Here's another example, um, the backup booster shooting first. Again, I'll snap through these. We can see the bottom booster, the top booster, and boom, that's the top booster firing before the bottom booster, whether by design or not. This is the type of graph you would get. Uh, the top deck shooting first, very similar. The bottom deck shooting later. And of course, because the probe cable's already been cut off by the top deck, uh, we will get no information from the bottom deck because the cable's been cut off. This is interesting, shooting through the decking material. What if you have decking material that's maybe drill cuttings and isn't quite the right uh, decking material or quite, length, quite the right length of decking material? Uh, well, you can get a shoot through where you can see the VOD at the bottom, um, deck of explosives going, the shock going through the decking material, and a sympathetic detonation of the bulk explosives or the booster uh, in the top deck. No delay means your vibrations will be a lot bigger than you expected. Here's uh, an example of um, packaged explosives uh, detonating property. We've got a wet hole. We're dropping packages in. We've got the detonator in one of the packages. We've got the probe cable exactly the same setup as, as earlier. The detonator fires. We know the detonator position in the hole, and we can get the velocity of the packages. But what happens if 
uh, something in between the packages falls in, maybe some whole sloughing. Um, package explosive. Oh, and we've caught some material in there unbeknownst to us when we were loading. What does that graph look like? Well, in this case, the shock doesn't go through enough to, to set the upper packages of uh, explosives off. And in this case, nearly half or more than half of the column fails to detonate. Let's look at pumped explosives quickly. Um, here's one wet hole. Uh, um, one wet hole going to be loaded with a, a pumped explosive. Um, we can see the VOD probe cable with a rock weight. You can see the booster. And in this case, um, best practices is to weigh the booster down with a, a weight, whether it's a rock or something else, um, so that that booster won't float up uh, when you're pumping at relatively high um, volumes. And um, so best practices are to weigh that booster into place. There's the pumped explosive, the stemming. Again, the setup for the probe cable and the micro traps always the same. The booster fires. We know the booster position and we know the velocity of the explosives. Uh, here's one with a, a backup booster. Again, the bottom boosters weighed into place. Um, the backup boosters also weighed into place in this case, um, just to stop them from floating and the bottom booster shoots first and shoots through the top booster and we can get the velocity of the explosive. Um, here's one wet hole uh, with two decks. Again, both boosters are weighed into place uh, with rocks to hold them in place. Uh, stemming's added. And this is what, would we, what we would expect. Uh, the booster would fire, velocity of the bottom deck, um, a delay until the top deck fires, which we can determine then the velocity of the top deck. So what happens when things go wrong with pumped explosive? Well, here's, here's an unweighted booster, which often float. We can see that from the graph. Uh, here's uh, mixing with water. Uh, maybe you're pumping explosives, but you're dropping it uh, quite a distance down into the water as opposed to pumping from the bottom of the hole. So what happens there? Well, you get water inclusions in the, in the bulk explosive, or you can. And of course, your VOD recorder will be able to show you that. In this case, the bottom booster failed to initiate, but thankfully we had a backup booster in the top and it uh, was out of the water zone and it was able to uh, shoot uh, an unknown amount of the top part of the column. Um, dead pressing from static pressure. If you have long, deep holes, uh, maybe a very uh, a gas sensitized emulsion, for instance, and you are um, maybe putting that in at a density higher than it should be, uh, if the static pressure from the head on top is strong enough, then uh, those uh, hot spots, the air, air voids in the gas emulsion or gas slurry um, will be pre-compressed. And when the booster fires, um, there will be uh, no hot spots there for the bulk explosive to, um, to detonate. Uh, dead pressing from dynamic pressures. This is a, a big issue throughout the world. Um, again, we, we load the hole the same way. Uh, but in this case, when we fire the shot at the same time or close to the same time that the uh, detonator fire is due to fire, dynamic pressures coming back from holes detonating on earlier delays uh, is pre-compressing those um, uh, gas hotspots in the uh, emulsion explosives. Um, and uh, therefore, when it, the booster is caused to ask to initiate the bulk explosive, um, the bulk explosive fails. In uh, some coal mines, uh, 
we're drilling through uh, to the top of coal and then backfilling a little bit. Uh, sometimes drill cuttings are used as backfill and in a wet hole and you're pumping uh, emulsion down there, what you find out is that backfill can easily mix with the emulsion in the bottom of the hole. And again, when that booster is called upon to shoot that mixture, now that it has the drill cuttings in this case mixed in, um, the explosive fails. Um, again, the same sort of thing can happen when you have a um, decking material of drill cuttings between uh, uh, pumpable explosives. Um, and again, you get the, that mixing effect going on where you might get the bottom booster to shoot fine, as indicated here, but then uh, at the top of the decking material, uh, that uh, top booster is unable to shoot the, the explosive. Finally, um, for the examples, uh, here's a multiple blast hole test. You can see there's actually probe cable looped up and down from hole one to hole two, down and up, hole three, down and up, hole four, down and up. Hole one fires first, then two, then three, then four. Um, and it's connect, uh, the probe cable is connected back to the microtrap standard operating procedure. Uh, this is the results uh, that you can expect. You will get the delay time between each of the holes, and you will be able to zoom in and get the velocity of detonation for the explosives in each of the holes. You'll also get the detonator, or sorry, the booster position in each of the holes. So, in uh, conclusion, we all know poor blasting results cause mining costs to increase. Sometimes the problem actually resides with the explosives and not the blast design. Explosives quality and performance affect blasting results. Explosive performance can be affected by blast hole conditions and by dynamic pressures from the blast itself. We've seen how performance can be measured and documented easily with an explosives VOD recorder. Those results will show exactly what's happening in the blast holes during the blast. With that knowledge, that knowledge that the VOD recording provides, blasting results can be diagnosed and improved for future blasts. Well, with that, I see my time is up. And I'll close by saying, Trema Kesi Simoenya. Thank you, everyone. I hope to see you soon. Thank you.